Welcome back to Auto Odometer, where we like to show you that driving a used car is the best option out there. Today we're going to be changing the front disc brakes here on my 1999 Toyota 4Runner. Now before we do this, we got to make sure that everything is safe and secure before we jack up the car. Once your car is in place and you're sure it won't move, get your jack stand and start jacking up your car. Now I'd like to stop here and say that I'm offering a 217 car care tips guide that has tips for multiple different aspects of your car. If you want to head into, down into the description and I'll leave a link to where you can find that and I'll send it right over to you. Once your car has been jacked up and you pull your tire off, just do a simple inspection of your tire and check for the proper tread. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to leave a tip that is pretty useful so you're going to want to stick around to find out so you don't have complications when you're trying to fill up your brake fluid. Put your car into neutral and turn your wheel to whichever way makes it easier to work on your brake calipers. Once you're all set, first things first, you have to take out this little pin here that holds the two rods together. Simply pop it out of the housing on the caliper and then pinch it and pull it out. Get yourself a screwdriver or a hammer or anything that will help you get these two rods out. Now this clip in the center that are holding the top and bottom of the rods is under tension. Make sure that when you pull the rods out, the thing doesn't fly all over the place and become damaged. Now you're going to want to get something where you can hook up to your bleed system on your brake as well as something that will catch any brake fluid. Now what you want to do is crack this brake bleeder valve so when you compress the caliper the extra fluid in there goes into a canister. Now you can make one of these brake bleed systems yourself or you can purchase one from Amazon or go down to the, your local AutoZone and pick one up. Once your bleeder valve is open and you see that your brake fluid is actually flowing through it when you press on the caliper pistons, you're ready to take out your brake pads. Now, you don't have to take off your caliper to do this. On my driver's side, here in a bit, you'll actually see me take my caliper off, but on my passenger side, I was able to successfully pull the pads out without having to take the entire caliper off. Unfortunately, here on the driver's side, I was not able to do that. I took a clamp and I clamped the pad against the caliper and squeezed just enough to be able to pull the pad out. Once you pull the pad out, we can look at the wear indicator and we see where our noise was coming from. You can see the wear indicator was slightly touching the rotor which was causing that awful squeaking noise. So that first one really didn't give us much trouble. Unfortunately, all of them are not going to come out that easy. This second pad here on the inside of the car on the driver's side wasn't as easy. You can get yourself a screwdriver and put it on the top and bottom holes of the pad and try to work it out that way. Continue to take your hands or your clamp and compress the piston as much as possible. Also make sure that your brake fluid is coming out. Eventually it'll come out. Then you can check your wear indicators and see how much your brake pad was worn down. We can see that it wasn't as worn down as the outside brake pad. And you can see also that it's two different looking brake pads. You have the inside brake pad which has the two wear indicators and the outside just having the one. You want to make sure that you use one of each for each side so you don't finish and close up one side and then you get to the other side and notice that you have two of the same brake pad. Now here comes the fun part. You have to make sure your pistons are pushed back far enough to be able to slip your new brake pad in with the extra distance on your new brake pad. You're going to want to try to pull on a flat surface and if you can try to compress both calipers at the same time. Depending on the type of tools you have, you might have to take off your brake caliper to be able to squeeze them back into place. Now here on my driver's side, that's exactly what I had to do. I just took two of my vice grips and pulled both calipers at the same time. Make sure that your brake bleed valve is still open and that the fluid is flowing. Now remember, you don't have to compress them all the way. Without your caliper on your rotor, you don't know how much gap you have to be able to fit your new brake pad in. So you might as well compress them all the way.
With your pistons completely compressed, take a wire brush and flake off any of the rust that built up behind the brake pads. You don't want any of this rust getting in between your pad and your rotor, causing anything to squeal. Once your caliper is back on your piston, you're going to want to tighten your bleed valve. When you put the pads back in and you compress the pistons on the pad, you don't want fluid flowing out of your system and emptying your reservoir, causing air to get into your system. If your bleed valve cover is still intact, go ahead and put that back on. For extra precaution, you're going to want to take some anti-brake squealing lubricant and put it on the back of the pads. You also might want to put it anywhere there's any contact metal to metal. At the end of this job when everything was said and done, I didn't have any squealing, so everything was done correctly. Make sure you don't get any of that lubricant on your rotor. You don't want anything preventing you from stopping. I don't think you can put your pads in backwards, but just make sure that your inside pad on the left has the two wear indicators and your outside pad has the one wear indicator. Once your pads are in, go get the rest of your brake hardware. Slip the top rod in first so you can rest the clip on the top rod and then slip your bottom rod in. Now this might need some convincing just like it did when you were pulling your rods out. Go ahead and get your screwdriver or your hammer and do the best you can to slip them in. Now you have holes on the top and bottom of your pads. Just make sure that you slip it in both the top and bottom holes. Now you have one more piece that you have to put in your brake hardware. I actually forgot to put this on. I went ahead, compressed my pistons, and put my wheel back on. Fortunately, I just slipped behind the wheel and put this rod in without having to take the wheel back off. Now that you have a gap here, you want to make sure your pads are flush against your rotor. You also want to make sure that you fill up your brake reservoir so it doesn't go below the minimum. So now to the tip that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Don't shake up your brake fluid bottle. I did this and it actually introduced air into the system. I was pressing my brake pedal when the job was all done and I was not coming to a complete stop. Thankfully all I had to do was bleed my brake system until all of the air got out of the system. It took probably about 15 to 20 minutes and eventually I got all the air bubbles out of the system but I learned a valuable lesson. Don't shake up your brake fluid bottle. So that basically wraps it up. Once your pads are completely compressed against your rotor, you're all finished up. Go ahead and put your wheel back on and lower your car. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to get notified of all the new videos that I put out. Here at Auto Odometer, we like to show you that driving a used car is definitely the best option out there, and if you can work on it, even better. Hit that like button, head down to the comments, and let me know what you thought about this video. Thanks for watching. Yeah.